everyone, it's AJ and we're continuing on with Eurovision week. Whoop whoo! And we have the second semi-final. Who shall win? We shall see. Hmm. But there will be controversy, there will be drama because within some of the songs that are in this semi-final, the grading will be very out there and there will be people who will not be happy. So Yay! <laughs> and if you're just watching this because you have like no clue what Eurovision is and you're just watching it for the sake of it, good for you! Thank you! <laughs> and just nod and agree, that's the best thing to do. <laughs> so down below in the description I have made up a playlist of the running order of all of the acts that are playing and you can judge for yourself what do you think everything gets. So our three categories, just for a wee reminder, are visual style, song quality and Eurovision feel. So now that we're doing 1 to 10, the ranking system should hopefully, hopefully make it go a lot easier for you to judge on what you feel things should get. So with that being said, let's kick it off shall we? <laughs> so the first country we have is Austria. Now Austria had a kind of, they brought a good song to kind of open up the semi-final. I was like, ah, that's good. Like, it wasn't as bad as Australia, like, when we really hated Australia. But it wasn't a very high-ranked Austria. So, they got 12 for their visual style, and then 13 points for their song quality and for Eurovision feel. So, a very solid start. We're kicking it off nicely. And then we hit the Czech Republic, <laughs> who do not do as well, unfortunately. Like, they are... They're not even hitting double digits for their combined scores, which is very unfortunate. So for their scoring, they got a 6-5-6. Six, six. So thinking about it, not great when it's, if you divide it by two, because that's essentially our scores combined. So not great, not great. One that did slightly better was Estonia. I say slightly. It gets one double digit <laughs> score. It got a 10 for visual style but it got nines for its song quality and, well, Eurovision feel. Considering you can have it like out of 60 for your points and you're scoring that low, meh. It's basically, it's a meh song because it's basically right in the middle of like points wise. So, he tried. Then we move on to Greece. Now, Greece didn't really do well either. Like, they didn't hit the double digits either. They were 767. Seven. That in itself is unfortunate. Oh, Greece. Also, this is a semi final with like all the ballads. Like, so many bloody ballads. But the next song by the next country was not a ballad. And it was Iceland. So, if you watched the last episode, I revealed to you that there are some songs that I've already known about and kind of have slight bias for. This is one of them. And. <laughs> Not surprisingly, it did well. Now remember, we've only got five tens to work with. So it would be silly, right, to just blow off like three tens this early on in the competition. Yeah, we didn't do that. No, or should I say, we did do that. 2020, 20, full points, perfect score. To Iceland and if you haven't watched Iceland's performance or song you need to and it's, it's oh it's just it's just that <laughs> remember totally not biased <laughs> but slightly biased so then we go from that glory that is Iceland to Moldova now Moldova over the last decade has brought some really good songs like My Lucky Day and like Hey Mama and then if we go back to the really great meme <laughs> of 2010 with Runaway because obviously the, the birth of Epic Sax Guy but then like but then they've brought some bad songs so it's like it's kind of like what we're going to get with Moldova is it going to be a great song is it going to be a bad song and unfortunately we didn't get a great song 
we got a meh song. So they scored a 697. Once again, not hitting the double digits. So it's not up there. It's not good in the good category. It's not high ranking, unfortunately. Then we move on to Poland. And well, Poland is basically just kind of middle-ish as well. They do hit some double digits, but they are like the, the low double digits. Like they got a 10, 11, 8. It's the meh category. Nothing spectacular about it, but it's not horrendous. And in this horrible judging thing, I think that's what you kind of hope for. You don't want to be like, oh, that song was horrendous. Now, <laughs> we move on to San Marino. The song title just demonstrates or encapsulates perfectly what the song is and everything about it. Freaky. That performance, man, honestly, pff, it is rough. Well, the song quality is rough, personally. <laughs> like, it ranked, it got an 8 for its song quality. I really hated it. I think I gave it like a 2 or something like that. My pal gave it a 6. Like, that's how much I really didn't like the actual song. But we scored it really high on both the visual style and Eurovision feel because it is so bizarre and weird that it fits it perfectly. So they both got 15. <laughs> Although one of the parts that really hurt to watch was they have like this terrible CG, like terrible and it just hurts to watch. <laughs> it looks like CG like back from like the 80s. We'll digress and move on to something that was generally more accepted and that is Serbia <laughs> and Serbia actually shocked me with this performance and I loved it because I hadn't watched it I hadn't seen anything about it and I was just like all right okay so this girl group comes on it's like oh so it scored decently high in our scores so it got a 15 for its visual style, a 12 for its song quality and 13 for Eurovision feel because you just need to watch it and you just, just go yes, just nod and agree, yes, that is just Eurovision. That is just a top class Eurovision song. Is it the best song? No. But is it a good Eurovision song? Yes. But then we move on to the first major controversial thing that we will be doing in this judging. Now, next is Albania or should I say should have been Albania. Part of our rules was that we were, were judging the music videos or live performances of the songs to gauge how we rank in our categories. Albania doesn't have a music video. Albania also doesn't have a live performance of this song. So it's only a lyric video that they have on the Eurovision channel and whatnot. So how can we judge on visual style? And if it's a Eurovision kind of song, if we can't see it. So, we didn't even listen to it. You can't judge it fairly. Like, if we listen to it, like, there would be zeros for literally the other two categories. There might be, like, a small grade for, like, how the song kind of sounds if it would be a great Eurovision song. But it's already going to fail already because it's already losing the potential of 20 points. So, we agreed to it was automatically eliminated from the competition which sucks, but it's not fair for us to judge it in regards to everyone else. First controversial thing that's happening. We already kicked out a country before it could even have a chance. Oh, but hopefully next year, if she comes back, we'll get, to, well, obviously next year, hopefully we should have our normal competition. So then if she comes back and sings, like we should be good. Cause she's a good singer. Fingers crossed for next year. So now moving on from that, we have Armenia. Armenia was interesting. The visuals were really good. Like we gave it a 16 out of 20. The song didn't really, wasn't that great. So it got a 9. It wasn't like terrible, obviously, because it's kind of, it's in the meh category. And then we gave it a 10 for Eurovision feel because it's kind of like, all right. We move on to the second controversial thing that's happening in this semi-final. Because the next act is Bulgaria. Now, Bulgaria was like really high up in the voting for like, or the polls for like what was going to win or what was going to do really well but <laughs> it only gets one double figure in our categories and that's 11 points for song quality and I can tell you that that's because I gave it I, th I think I gave it like a six <laughs> so that was why it got into the double figures it got a two for visuals because it was just all right 
<laughs> it was nothing to nothing that gripped us and we felt like the staging would be kind of boring also we, we don't know what would have happened in the live shows but we're judging from the music video this is what we thought and then this is the real kicker it got two points in the eurovision feel we each gave it a one because when you listen to the song you do not think of eurovision at all do you know what you do think of billy eilish and not to say that's a bad thing, but this is a Eurovision competition. She literally is like a Bulgarian Billie Eilish. So that is why it's ranked so low <laughs> in our competition. Because how we were going with Eurovision feels like when you hear and watch it, do you think of Eurovision? And then if all you can think of is she's similar to B uh, Billie Eilish, like that's obviously not Eurovision. That would be <laughs> our second controversial act of the second semi-final. <laughs> anyway, we'll digress and we'll move into Denmark, which brings us into more, we're, we're back to the meh category. So despite they got double figures in all of our categories, they came out with an 11-10-11. It is very much on the meh. So going from Denmark, we go up north to Finland, and they are also in the same what same similar category although we enjoyed the song slightly more when we gave it a 13 but slightly less in other categories where they got a 9. so see at this point in the competition we've had so many ballads like so many ballad type songs not gonna lie we were getting kind of drained <laughs> because we just heard so many ballads and we were not hearing anything like kind of new new and it was like right we just need to keep going and then we get georgia now this is where my tastes and my pal's tastes differ dramatically she really loved georgia like she fell in love with this song and I just couldn't get into it. I just hated, I hated nearly everything about it. I think, if I remember correctly, I gave it all twos. So the reason it has better marks is because of my pal. <laughs> so Georgia got seven for its visual style. Like, I really didn't, it was, I was so bored with it. It got an eight for the song quality and it got a five for its Eurovision feel. Like I said, I was very cruel to this song. I, it wasn't a ballad or anything like that. It does have its smart elements to it, which I appreciate, but it just wasn't for me. Like, I just couldn't get into it at all. And even listening to it twice, I'm just, I'm still like, mm -mm, nah, nada. I just, there was just something about it I just didn't like. Moving away from that, <laughs> we hit to Latvia. And Latvia is, well, Latvia had some very mixed, like, it was in the meh category of visual style and Eurovision feel with a 10 and an 11, but it really dipped on the song quality. It only got a 5. They had those, el like, see the songs that had, like, the good elements of this is, like, they had the visuals and they had the good feel of, like, if it was, like, a Eurovision song, and then they just dropped it on the song quality. Obviously, on our personal opinions. Obviously, there will be people that would disagree with us. So, having all the ballads, and then I remember like saying to my friend when we were messaging, because we were doing it through messages, we went, we, we didn't do the easier thing of like doing it like through a Zoom or anything like that, where like we could watch the video at the same time. No, we were like syncing up, like doing <laughs> messages through like Messenger, and it was like, <laughs> I remember saying, it's like, right, we've got Portugal next, right? Maybe it will get better. <laughs> and my pal went, you know it's bad when you're relying on Portugal to try and lift up your spirit. <laughs> and then it was as though I had jinxed it because Portugal did not bring it at all. Like, they are in the single digits. They are, they just did not do it. Like, their highest score was eight on the Eurovision feel. That is how bad we didn't grasp onto it. It got a six for the other two categories but then we get on to the last country which is Switzerland and I just love saying it like that so please don't hate me <laughs> and this is all in French so it's like oh okay because most of the songs we had before were in English or they had English as part of the songs. At this point it started and I was like right all great it's another ballad like oh oh no I fell in love with this ballad. I have no idea why. It, there's just something about this ballad that just really gripped me and the visuals for it 
were stunning. Like how it was shot was beautiful. I just fell in love with it so much. My pal, she wasn't as much of an armoured, but it still did very well. Like it all hit double digits. So I got the 13 for the visual uh, visual style, a 14 for the song, because I think I gave it, <laughs> I gave it like an 8. I was like, I am loving this. And then a 12 for Eurovision feel, because it was like a kind of typical Eurovision ballad. But yeah, so that concludes all of our rankings of the second semi-final, which then brings us to who got eliminated. Hmm. You may be thinking, well, I know some of them if you've been counting or if you've kind of worked it out. There's definitely some drama. So the first country to leave, unfortunately, with 17 points, which was the lowest ranking, was Czech Republic. Oh, you had that opportunity and it didn't happen. This is where the third controversy comes in. <laughs> if you've made, you will clicked by now about what's happening. The second worst act for us was Bulgaria. That is right. The one that was like top to be a potential winner by all the bookies and everything like that and within the community, we have kicked out in the semi-final with 19 points. Ooh, it is not a good day to be a Bulgarian fan. <laughs> Please don't hate us, but in the course of the other categories, like that is why it's done badly because it did poorly in the other ones. Like I still kind of rated it decently high. I, I still gave it a six. In my end, so a 6 out of 10 is still not too bad because I don't mind the song, but it's failed in the other categories and you have to succeed in all categories, you can't just have a song. And then we have three countries that tied with 20 points and that was Georgia, Portugal and Greece. Which broke my pal's heart because obviously she loves Georgia and well, we booted them out. <laughs> and then the next country we kicked out was Moldova and in... Unfortunately, just at the edge, we kicked out Latvia. And that was the final country to get kicked out alongside Albania, which we already had eliminated earlier on in the competition. So, that concludes the second semi-final. And then next time, we will be adding in the top five, or the big five, and then we'll be having our final. Ooh, who will win? Now, remember, with the final, we'll be having our extra judge who is essentially acting as the televote because we've already done our voting, we've already done our judgments apart from the top five. So this shall be interesting because he is essentially a wild card because <laughs> his tastes are out there. <laughs> so how does the final go? We shall see. Who will be the fake winner of Eurovision 2020? Until then... I'm AJ, I did something today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!